uh, increase their search capabilities. Doug? Thanks, Marty. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, the role of open source more generally in the, in the future of search and in, uh, and in academia, um, but also um, touch a little bit on the, on the projects that, that I've been involved with. I'm actually going to start out with that. Um, uh, so what, what are some good examples of open source search software? Um, well, the ones I know best are the ones that I've worked on. Uh, these are all projects at Apache. Um, Apache, uh, you probably all know for the, from the Apache web server, um, uh, it's an open source software foundation um, who, which distinguishes itself um, by having a community-based uh, open source style um, uh, where um, the emphasis is on collaboration by, um, by people who are independent uh, so that they, it's, it's not sort of one company just giving away software for free that they've written. Rather, it's um, a number of companies or independent individuals um, together collaborating uh, forming a community around some software uh, and, and developing it um, for their shared use. Um, and there's very strong emphasis on that um, to the degree that if a project becomes too dominated by one, one party, then, then that's considered very unhealthy and, and they're, they're you know, means to, to remedy that. Um, so uh, the first project I did at, at Apache was um, Lucene, which is a um, Search library, uh, it's, you know, sort of usually embedded in applications that want to add search. Um, so examples are um, on the web. There's a Wikipedia website. If you search on Wikipedia, they use Lucene, a version of it. Monster.com, uh, Technorati, some folks here from Technorati, uh, uses Lucene for its search. Um, but also there's some desktop app applications. Eclipse uh, is one, probably some other ones that are better known. It's one that came to mind. Um, uh, so. Building on, on Lucene, um, there's another project uh, called Nutch. And Nutch is a um, web search application. So it's, it's not just focusing, focusing generally on, on search, um, uh, on full text search, and, um, but on the specific application of full text search to web data. Um, uh, so it in incorporates a crawler, um, knowledge about things like anchor text um, and link analysis, um, uh, also the, the various sorts of uh, formats you see on the web. Uh, you know, PDF, HTML, et cetera. Um, uh, and it's a, um, in some ways analogous to, um, uh, to a web search engine, but you know, it's, it's an open source one. Um, it obviously, uh, because it's, it's software, um, there's, you need to actually run it somewhere. Um, so it's not really comparable to, to Google or Yahoo or Microsoft um, uh, for, for a number of reasons. Um, uh, but one is it, it, it doesn't necessarily scale as well. The quality might not be quite as good, but it's, it fulfills a, a similar functional purpose. Um, it's used by various sites. Um, Krugel, which is a um, source code search engine. Uh, Creative Commons um, used to, I don't know if they're still running a Nutch-based search engine for Creative Commons licensed data. Um, uh, Yahoo, since then, um, rolled out its own version of, of something similar, and Google may have as well, um, to the point which it became silly for Creative Commons to run their own anymore, and so I think they stopped. Um, uh, University of Washington, the, re the research we was talked about this morning um, uh, that Oren Etzioni talked about, I think uh, uses Nutch for that. Um, various, various folks around use it. Um, Hadoop, which is the um, latest thing I've been working on, uh, is a distributed computing thing, so this directly addresses the, the last question, um, which is it, it does implement um, MapReduce and a, um, a distributed file system that's very much like the Google file system, uh, uh, and um, uh, as a but as, a, as something that anybody can download and use, uh, and it works well on um, Amazon's infrastructure. Um, so this um, sort of opens up web scale computing um, to more people. Um, uh, so you can very simply um, write code that will do things like invert links, build indexes, all that kind of stuff. Over, over terabytes of data um, using thousands of computers. Um, uh, and that's being pretty actively developed. Um, PowerSet, who was here earlier this morning, is using it um, uh, for, for very, for I don't know what, but they're using it. Uh, um, uh, Yahoo uses it some internally um, uh, and hopes to use it, use it more in the future. Um, so these are the sorts of things I'm talking about with, with search today in open source. Um, so. Why open source? Um, there's, I'm sure, books out there describing the you know, pros and cons of open source, and I haven't read them. So I, I, they, they might say the same stuff. This is sort of my personal view of, of the reasons that I find um, open source attractive to me and the people I've talked to. Um, 
So one of the things that I like is that code I write that's open source uh, survives. I've worked for companies that have gone bankrupt, and uh, the code's effectively gone from the, from the face of the earth. Everything that was written there, there were some interesting systems. Um, it's you know, not even really archived. It's in some legal limbo, um, uh, and, and so it's, it's impossible to get. Um, uh, and so that's a nice thing, as somebody who, who contributes to know that what you're going to do is going to continue to be around. Um, another thing that's really nice is when you're developing using open source or on open source is that all the source is there. It's really easy to, to debug things. Um, it's, it's hard to underestimate that. It's much harder, and you require much greater documentation and much more support when you don't have the source. Um, uh, and you don't have a, a community around to help you navigate the source as well. Um, another thing that's refreshing working on open source projects, uh, especially um, uh, the way that Apache runs things, uh, is that decisions are based on, on merit. Apache calls itself a meritocracy. Um, so there's, for example, there's no incentive to, to lie. If there's a bug, shout it out. You know, if it doesn't implement something well, we're happy to c confess that. Um, we, we don't want to hide anything. There's absolutely no incentive because we're not, we're not selling software. We're giving it to people. We're actually trying to incent more people to help us, so we, we want to point out flaws. Um, we don't want to sell anybody a false bill of goods. Um, so there's sort of no, what I consider, marketing pressure um, on you as a, as a developer, which is really nice um, uh, for those, of us, those who've experienced other motivations uh, pushing at them. Um, things that I think make open source software popular, um, the reasons users might like it, is, is the, the first one um, is pretty obvious that it's free, free as in beer. Um, uh, you know, the, the price is right, and so people feel there's no risk to, to try it out. Um, they know they're not going to have to pay. Um, uh, and in some sense, that reflects a, um, a more efficient model. Um, you've got the people who need it collaborating. There isn't a, there isn't a middleman uh, in between, and they build it to do precisely what they need it to do uh, rather than what somebody infers they might need it to do and then tries to sell them a new version or something. Um, uh, but I think also... There's the, there's the free as in freedom uh, uh, part of it in that people can have a fair degree of confidence that um, this, somebody's not going to turn around and start charging for them for it or charge them for an upgrade, um, that they can modify it and do what they want with it, that they have some, because, it's, because they have the source and because of how they obtained the code and how it was written, um, that, that they, ha they have some more confidence that it's not going to get somehow twisted away from them. Uh, in, in a way that, that uh, proprietary code can. Um, uh, and, and finally, I think people really like the, the, um, the sort of casual communities that, that form around open source projects um, where you can send messages out and get help right away from other people who are in similar situations to yourself. Um, uh, and it, it seems to work pretty well. People don't express a lot of frustration, at least not that I've heard, um, about being unable to use the software. They usually manage to use it. Um, and without having professional support organizations or even particularly good documentation. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm probably going on too long here. I don't have much time. Uh, so quickly, um, what, what is the, the future of open source in search? Um, well, what open source na does naturally um, is make commodity platforms. That's, that's something it does, it does best. It's, it's no reason that it doesn't also sometimes innovate um, uh, but innovations are usually tend to be more proprietary. Um, uh, and you know, it's by, sort of by definition, somebody's secret sauce, if you want to keep it secret, then it's something you're going to want to own and, and, and have, have as a proprietary thing. Um, but the stuff that isn't proprietary, it's more economical to, to share. And so I, I think historically we've seen that, that software, as, as it becomes more commoditized, um, it, there become open source implementations that people can build on uh, and, and not have to uh, pay a vendor for it. Um, and over time, the commoditization moves up the stack. Um, uh, we've seen in the projects I've talked about, um, Lucene, Nutch, and Hadoop, each, each are reaching a little further uh, than I think people would have considered uh, a commodity not long ago. I mean, Google only published the MapReduce paper, uh, I don't know, four years ago maybe, something like that. Um, so that's, that wasn't, certainly wasn't a commodity four years ago. Um, and we're, we're pushing hard to, to make it become one. Um, and, and we want to keep chasing commoditization up, up the stack further. Um, there's lots of things which aren't yet available in, in the open source search stack. Um, there's not uh, good tools to help folks with search quality. It's a problem everybody who, who runs any sort of search engine has. Um, there's some, a lot of techniques for working on search quality are, 
are pretty well known. I mean, I'm sure there is some, some black magic, um, uh, but, but that's not the stuff I'm talking about. There's just things about how do you, how do you measure, how do you run a study of, of gathering search quality results, and then how do you use those, incorporate those judgments to, to improve search um, uh, quality. And some of it is actually pretty straightforward. Um, and it'd be nice to get some of that out in open source. Um, spam detection, similarly, there's some, some pretty basic methods. There's obviously some that you, know, you, you want to keep secret, um, uh, but some of them uh, probably don't need to be. It'd be nice to get more of that out. Um, and those are just a couple things I thought of. I'm, I'm sure there's you know, you know, more valuable things than that that, that others can think of um, that, that ought to be open source projects. Um, so finally, um, what's the, how does open source work with, with higher ed? I, I think there's two different ways. Um, for one thing, um, open source platforms um, are pretty great for research because they give you um, uh, access to tools that you, you might not have otherwise. So for example, Hadoop, lets people um, do the sort of research um, that you couldn't do otherwise unless you worked for Yahoo, Microsoft, or, or Google. Um, uh, it's because th those companies have big toolkits, have these big grids, but most people don't. Um, and now it's, it's becoming more possible um, uh, through projects like Hadoop for, um, for just about anybody to do this kind of work. Um, uh, they also, because you've got the, the source code, um, they permit easy alternation, alteration, sorry. Um, so you can do experiments, which is pretty critical to research. Um, so if you can com compare Nuts to a Google Appliance, um, uh, you know, Google Appliance is, is probably better if you just want to get something off the shelf that is going to search your intranet. But if you want to do um, research in, in making intranet search work better or how people are using it and you want to instrument things or, or, or do some other sort of um, different new style of search engine um, that, that's not currently available in the market and do some experiments with it, then Nuts is obviously going to be a lot easier to use. Um, uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's meant to be uh, modified um, easily, and every, everything's there. Um, research projects tend not to result in contributions back to the open source projects, uh, and, and that's, that's fine. I don't, I don't you know, have any problem with that. Um, but on the other hand, contributing back to open source, I think, is a, is a good thing for students to think about doing um, if they do in the course of... Um, doing a research project, do come up with some improvements, and they are general. I think it's actually a, a, something that too few students take the time to do, um, where they could actually benefit a lot. Um, for one thing, working on an open source project um, gives you the, the opportunity to work with some real top-notch professional uh, software developers, uh, people who you otherwise really don't have a lot of contact with, I think, at, at a university. Um, pe people who are sort of um, behind the walls of the, in companies are a lot of times contributing to open source projects. Um, and uh, and you, you can learn a lot. Um, also, you can learn about you know, the, the practices that, that these people use to, to collaboratively develop high-quality software. Um, and I mean, you can take a class in software engineering, but it's, it's different than actually working on a project. Um, uh, and it's, you know, anybody can do it, um, uh, pretty much. It's, you know, all you have to do is sh show up. Um, <laughs> uh, another thing is, is for, for a career building, um, uh, you can establish yourself in a community, in a, in a long-lived community, um, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to take that with you from job to job. You'll, you'll have some experience and, and knowledge of a technology which is useful across multiple jobs. Um, uh, so anyway, I, I would encourage students to, to think seriously um, uh, about that as, a, as something um, that, that, can, that can both teach you a lot and help you long-term in, in, in careers. Um, so that's basically all I wanted to say. Happy to answer, answer questions, both about um, op open source search stuff, and, uh, but also if you have specific things about the projects that I've, I've mentioned. Yeah. Do you want to wait for a mic? So there's been a lot in the news lately about Jimmy Wales and Wikia and supposedly built on, on top of Nutch. Can you talk about what you expect to be pushed back to trunk within the next year based on some of those efforts? I don't know. I, I, I've, I've talked with Jimmy myself. Um, I know they plan to, to do this. Um, I don't think they're very far along. They understand it's a big project. It would be great if it happens. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I want to help them how I can. Uh, I think they're in, in real early stages um, uh, of doing this. Um, so it's, it's too early to say. So uh, if, if I did have a piece of software that I wanted to put into Apache, uh, how would I do that or what? What's the process? 
Um, depends on how big a chunk of code it is. If it's a substantial system written by a bunch of different people, maybe from different employers or something like that, so it's like a SourceForge project that's already been developed for a while, then it can be sort of complicated because the title for the intellectual property may not be completely obvious. And Apache cares a lot about this, making, making things that are, they want it to be easy for people to use it legally, outbound. Um, so they, we watch closely what comes inbound. If it's something that you alone have written um, and you're willing to say, I wrote this and you really did write it, uh, then, then it's not too hard. Um, uh, if, it, if it's something big and substantial, then we might want to assign software grant. Um, there's a checkbox normally when you contribute saying that you, you know, I, I have the right to contribute this and, and so on. Um, but it, it's pretty straightforward. And then do you, do you then get to, uh, can other people just go change your, your I mean, what, what kind of control mechanisms are there? I mean, so there's, it, it's, it's a lot more controlled than Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> so there's a, there's a, um, a hierarchy. Um, there's uh, contributors, folks who just who, who give pieces of software. Um, there's committers, people who can actually change the source code repository. So after, after people have shown that they know how to make contributions that are what the, 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 the community feel, the community and the project likes, um, then they get nominated and elected to become committers so they can make changes directly. Um, then above that, there's a couple levels there. There's a thing called a project management committee, um, which uh, has to vote on uh, releases and elects committers. And then there's, a, anyway, there's, there's a whole hierarchy uh, of structure. Uh, and it runs pretty effectively. There's, there's um, uh, very rarely are there disputes. Um, uh, it tends to be a pretty polite uh, uh, scene. Um, but, but no, not, no one can just come along and, and change things at random. Uh, Okay, one, one other question um, in terms of uh, how does Nutch compare to Heratrix? And we had the Alexa guy talk. Alexa guy Heratrix is a crawler. Heratrix is focused on facilitating deep crawls. So it's a crawler only. Um, uh, it's focused on facilitating deep crawls um, uh, for archival purposes. So they want to get every page from a site. Um, uh, Nutch's crawler is more focused on um, uh, scaling. Uh, Heretrix scales to some degree. I don't think it probably scales as well as Natchez crawler. It certainly is not designed from the ground up to be able to scale arbitrarily as Natchez is. Whether Natchez really does scale arbitrarily, we, we don't know yet. But uh, that's that's the that's the intent. Um, uh, and Natchez in intended to be more of a um, uh, best first style crawler um, uh, to be guided by um, something like uh, page rank or, or some measure like that as it crawls, um, rather than Heretrix is concerned about generally um, crawling full domains because that, that's what they've typically done with it is um, for archival purposes. Uh, people will hire them and they say we want everything on the web in Australia uh, archived. And so they you know, get all of .au. Um, uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a different focus. Um, we can, the output format for Heratrix is a, um, is a file format that Nutch can actually ingest. Um, so the Internet Archive, when they present searchable versions of their uh, crawls that they've created with Heratrix, or that they've gotten from Alexa, from Alexa's crawler, they use Nutch actually to take the data, to build the link graph, to do the indexing, um, figure out, you know, extract text from PDF. So except for the crawler part, they use Nutch after that in the pipeline. Um, so. so once more, thank you so much, Doug, for the cycle.